Hello, and welcome to our first show tonight, Patrick Noel Marshall. Now, Patrick was recommended to me by a good friend, Allison Bernard from Escazoni. Escazoni is a beautiful reserve in Cape Breton Island. It is actually, uh, to my knowledge, it is like the oldest reserve, the one that um, houses a lot of people on, on the reserve. So I'm really honored to speak with Patrick here. He's just getting ready backstage uh, Thanks to his daughter, got things up and running. We're so happy. So can I get you viewers to do a sound check with me before Patrick comes on? Because this is his first show. Um, on the side comments, if I could just ask you to do one of two things. Could you say yes, that you can hear us? And then the other thing is, could you start a watch party or share this video in your news feed now? just to try to get, we really want to try to get the numbers right now. I'm looking at eight viewers and we would love to get the numbers up to 30 viewers for Patrick's first show. It's going to be a great one. I was talking to Patrick today and he is just such a great guy to talk to. He has a wealth of knowledge in uh, certain topics, you guys, and uh, he loves sports. He's a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. So am I. Um, so we're looking forward to that. He also has a good pulse on the island. Uh, well, COVID was down. He started up a radio or a station called, now I'm going to pronounce it wrong, like, but it's called Talak. Well, I'll get him to correct me after I'm on. Uh, so this is going to be a good show. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Sunday nights at 8.30 after the ladies come on, we've got Annie Bernard, Daisley, and Heidi Marshall leading the, uh, co-hosting the ladies uh, show 231 calls for justice that happens at 7 30 on Sunday nights just after the Scotland show. So Sunday nights is jam packed full of really connective shows that it's going to bring a lot of people together. So are you guys ready? Can you put some love and hearts and thumbs up for this first show tonight and share this in your news feeds? You guys I'm just going to do a watch party right now before we bring him on. I'm going to go to my, I'm going to go to the page, the podcast here. So there's two channels, Ripple Effects Cape Breton, Ripple Effects Canada, and I'm going to go to Ripple Effects Cape Breton, and I'm going to see us live there. I'm just going to show you guys how to do it, because I had a couple people ask the other day how to do this, so, so this is how. So you go to your page, okay, and then once you see the video, okay, so here's Patrick, we're on live now, uh, at the very bottom... If you can see that, you guys, there's a little button that says, let's see if I can show this. See how it says start at the very bottom? So if you press start and then have that play in your personal news feed, people can watch it at the same time. So I'm going to share it and start a watch party on my own personal news feed. And then it does this. And now I can have more people watching it. So if you can do that, that'd be great. Here we go. See, there's already people joining on that news feed. Watch party right right on. Before we bring him up. All right. We are live. Let's bring up Patrick Marshall. I know, I know what, what I know, I know what, what, what we have, have an, an echo, echo Patrick. Patrick. Okay. Is it my mic? <laughs> okay, so it's 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 echoing. Is is it my mic that's causing the echo? But that's, that's okay, because okay, you're you're, you're, you're gonna, gonna do, do more talking. <clears throat> I think so. so. Okay. Um. So I guess I'm. I'm. I'm not a very. Keep on going. Don't worry about, about it. it. Just, just tell us who I am and what I've done. Tell us. Tell what us we what we have for two. two. Uh, more or less, just stories of of who I am and and stories of um our people and what they've done here in 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 the Mi'kmaq community. Uh, when I first started out, it it, it was meant for people that speak, spoke the language and have a little success towards the uh, off reserve. Um, uh, I had uh, Everett Sunnypass, who is a former NHL player. He was on our show and, and uh, we talked a lot about 
the barriers that he, he the, the doors he opened up for our youth in, in over the years. And, and then we had uh, uh, an MP from Jaime Batiste, same thing. Uh, I think that a lot of our parents, a lot of the younger parents are trying to teach their kids that it's more important for them to speak English than it is for them to speak Mi'kmaq. And for that, when, when that happens, it's it's taking the language away from our people. It's taking the language away from what's what's going on in our community. And I always said, uh, one of our elders always said this, uh, when the French lose their language, they can go back to France and they can pick it up there. When, when the Italians lose their language, they can go back to Italy. If we lose our language, that's it. We don't, we can't go back anywhere. And it was Trudeau, not this Trudeau, but the other Trudeau that said that once we lose our language, then we are just no longer, we are just citizens of Canada, regular citizens of Canada, and we are not First Nations anymore. So it's very important that we hold on to our language. And in order for anybody like, like myself, I, I'm fluent in Mi'kmaq. I, I speak Mi'kmaq at home. I speak Mi'kmaq everywhere else. Uh, I think I was in grade two when, when we were picked, when we were told we have to speak English. Well, we were, we had to speak English back in, back in those days in school. But once you get home, you know, we spoke the language in Mi'kmaq. Um, I'll tell you a little about who I am and what I've done. Uh, um, I'm, my name, like I said, my name is Patrick Marshall. I'm from Eskisoni First Nation. Uh, I'm married, 30 years married to my wife, Sonia. We have um, five children. I'm grandfather of two. Uh, I've worked everything from addiction services to furnace repairs to uh, sports and recreation, um, tourism. I, I was a tourism manager with, with Eskizoni. I did uh, public relations and you would work. I, I, oh, I was a online counselor one time back back in the days of uh, MIRC. I, I would sit there and just talk to the kids and, and most of the time just be up all night and talk to them. And, and I, I develop programs for our community, for the youth as well. And um, that's basically who I am and, and what I've done. And you're going to be having on other people on your so, show, which is so great. Which is so great. Actually, I, I asked you today, uh, there's two guys, well, there, there's more than two. There's quite a few people that, are inter that I'm interested in talking to. And it's it's elders from not only from our community but yeah. the other communities as well. Um, now <clears throat> yeah. I'm I'm working on something. I'm trying to work on something right now, where I'm I'm trying to get a I'm trying to do a 15 minute short film on, uh, on on the relationship between the First Nations and the RCMP. So sometime this week I'm going to be going to White Kagma Nyanza. Uh, member two, and just talk to the people and, and see how they portray, well, how they, how what they expect from the RCMP and, and what happens and, and you know just basically, it's got to a point where I, I find that our people are scared, and so one that's one of the things I was looking at doing a, a fifteen minute short film or or, or uh, uh, you can call it a documentary or or whatever. But oh, got some light here. But that's one of the things, and, and I'm like I said, I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm, I try to do this, I try to, and then little bits of that, little bits of this. So I'm 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 all for everything. Yeah, yeah. And you're and really, you're really into, into, sports. into sports. Oh, I I love sports. I, I coached. Uh, I've coached hockey the last. I'm 52. Um, I I played hockey with with guys that uh, that I coached. Uh, I coached uh, all our junior teams here in Eskizoni. I coached all our well, basically I coached every division. If I didn't coach and I was part of part of a team in in some way, a manager or something. Um, my young fella, my youngest, who's thirteen, he's a hockey player. He's my hockey player. Um, I invested yep, yep. quite a bit in him already, and we unfortunately the season was cut short when this. When all this happened with the virus going around, um, but 
hopefully we can continue this year and, and, and do a little bit more. But like I said, I, I'm into I'm into a sport, not only hockey, but I'm I'm into any, any sport. Like I, if if I can play, I don't even have to play. I'm, I can be a fan as well, anywhere. What what gives you the gives greatest, you the greatest pride, pride about, about uh, your, uh, your people? people. Our language, your your culture. your culture, our language. I have to say our language. Um, we've lived among the non-native people over five hundred years. Um, we still speak our language is still here. That's pretty amazing if you really think about it. For a small group of, of people yeah, to yeah. still speak their language after 500 years with so much influence from outside. But we, like I said, we still speak the language and, and hopefully 50 years time they'll, they'll still speak the language. Yeah, yeah. I got two now, boys. Now, my, I, 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. I have uh, two young fellows that I wanted to get on my podcast. Uh, they're both from Eskizoni. They're seven years old, and they only speak Mi'kmaq. I think they speak better Mi'kmaq than, than myself. They, they use they, they use words sometimes. I'll, I'll say, what what does that mean? Because they only speak Mi'kmaq. They, 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 and I asked them one day, I said, why is it so important for you guys? And they never even had the concept. They, they never had the concept of... of of what they're doing, how, how great it is, to them, it's just, they're just talking. Yeah, yeah. But but to me, I can see, oh my God, these young fellas, they speak the language so, so, so good. And and I'm always proud of them. I, I talked about, I talk about them a lot. Every chance I, every, every chance I, um, I'll mention their names. One's name is Andrew and the other's name is George. They're, they're about seven years old. They're both flown to Mi'kmaq, and, and they only speak Mi'kmaq, and and I, I love. I sometimes I'll just sit there, and watch them talk, and just they're like two little old men. Yeah, yeah. But but language is the number one thing that I'm that I'm really so proud of who we are. Tell us about Eskazoni, Patrick. Patrick. A little, a bit, little about bit about the, the geography, geography of it. And, and a little bit, a little about, bit the about the history of the history of it. How, how, the how old, 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 old Eskazoni, roughly? Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Well, it's my family. My, my mom's side of the family, they've been here, uh, geez, I don't know how long, but but they were, they were one of the first families that were here. And my dad's family was from yep. originally from Chapel Island. But they moved down here back in the twenties, thirties. And and what can I say about this is only that I wouldn't live anywhere else. That's the best description I can give anybody when they ask me what do you think of it. I wouldn't live anywhere else. That's this is my home. This is this is where I'm proud of. We might there we have we might have some differences here in the community. But when something happens, we come together and we when we fight together, we, we stand up together. And that's what I like about our community. It's it's so important for them to see somebody do good in the community. Like like for example, when when I'll give you an example. Uh, <clears throat> I lost my mom in November. And um, we have a we have after the funeral. We 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 go into we go into the hall, community hall. We have a feast, and then we have what we call a salite. It's an auction, and that helps cost. That help that helps the money that we earn goes towards the the funeral expense. Anyway, we we raise enough money for the funeral expense. We we even raise enough money for her to have a have a a, a gigantic headstone. And there was enough money left to give give to some of our family members, which we did. And that's when the whole community comes together. Like they, they come. Like, um, I would show you. It's, it's in the other room there. But they, they had, they had uh, my my mom's um, goddaughter put in a hand drum, and and it's a it's a it's a it's a white moose. It symbolizes um, uh, like my mom's life. So she put that in the auction, and they started beating on it. 
our chief Leroy paid two thousand dollars for it, and when it was given to him, when when they handed over the drum to him, he said, "Give it to Pat." So he gave me the two thousand, and I got it in my in, in my living room, and it's it's something that I'll never ever forget what the what the community can do in 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 that time of need. But like I said, I wouldn't live anywhere else. I, I this is Eskizoni is who I am, and Eskizoni is where I'll die. Is there any, is good, there any stories good stories you have? you have? Depends on what you want to hear. If it's a story about me, you know, I'll give you a, I'll give you an example of what I did one time. Um, oh my God, I, I shouldn't really say this because he, well, I was young, so I'll, I'll say it. I was about ten years old, and and I'm the youngest of ten. So my dad was very overprotective of, of me. He wouldn't let me hunt. He wouldn't let me do anything. He wouldn't let me fish. He wouldn't let me do carpentry work. He wouldn't let nothing. He, anything that had to be done, he would tell me, hold on, your brothers will do it for you. Like I said, I'm the youngest of 10, uh, six boys, and I'm, I'm the youngest. Anyway, uh, one day I, I wanted to go hunting, and, and he wouldn't even let me take the pellet gun or, or the, the, the light guns that he had. He wouldn't let me take those. So one day nobody was home. Um... And we live next door to our uncle. So I took a power, powerful gun, uh, 30 30, and I went down into the woods just behind the house. And, I, and my uncle standing by I step and he says, um, Where are you going? I said, I'm going hunting. And he says, um, that's, a, that's a big gun for what are you hunting? I said, Rabbit. He said, That's a big gun for a rabbit. He said, Okay, this is what you do. He said, You don't, you don't shoot directly at the rabbit. He said, Just tip the air. And, and the rabbit will die of a heart attack. So I got down to I got down to into the woods, wooded wooded part. So I'm I'm standing there. There's there's a, a rabbit eating about fifteen feet away. So I, I take the gun and I get it ready and I, I point the gun right right at the ear. And when I shoot the ear, unfortunately I didn't hit the ear. I I blew the head off. And the rabbit is all over the place. And I run, I'm, I'm coming running back up there. And my uncle says, catch anything? I said, no. And he said, I heard a gun. I said, oh, I just um, shot it in the air. And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hunt ever again. And that's the last time I hunted. Got my diet coke on my side and my hand sanitizer, so I'm ready for anything. So you haven't, so you haven't hunted since then? since then? I don't hunt. I don't fish. That's the, that's my hunting experience, and I'll, and I'll never hunt again ever. I don't. I don't. I can't see myself hunting anyway. I, I'm. I'm. I hate guns. Yeah. But that's my hunting story. Ten kids. Ten kids. Wow. Wow. I have, I have, I have five kids. I have five kids. Yeah, I'm, I like guess I'm the youngest of ten. In my my, I lost my dad twenty years ago to cancer. Um, my dad was um, he was old school. Uh, he was the youngest of ten, and when he was born. All his brothers and sisters were married already. I think his dad was 54 when he was born, and his mom was in his his mom was was about 50. So he was born to older parents, and that's why he was so, so old school. So when when we were growing up, he taught us the way he was taught, like um, back back in school. <clears throat> I, he would tell us, if you if you're being bullied, you stand up and you fight back. And me, like I said, the youngest of ten, my my job was to go out there and fight. If I get my butt kicked, then two of my other brothers would go and and pay revenge on on what happened. But if I held my own, then my dad said, "It's all right. He did he did good." 
but that's how we were taught and with, with so much bullying in, in going on today sometimes I catch myself telling my young fella you know don't back down and that's the last thing I want to do is fight but that that thing that comes into my head was what my dad taught us so like I said he's old school and he's the kind of guy where if you wanted a laptop and you said I got to have a laptop no nah, I don't need a laptop I never had a laptop so that's that's kind of that's what he believed in There we go. There we go. Yeah, old style. Old style. And, and, um, don't let the face fool you. I'm, I'm, I'm a really nice person. I'm a really outgoing person. My face just is different. And, and a lot of people have a tendency to mistake that as a form of intimidation. And, you know, once once people get to know who I am and, and my sense of humor, I got I got... I don't want to toot my own horn, but I got a great sense of humor. Tell us about, Tell the, us properties about the properties of, 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 of Sade. Sade. Pardon? Tell us about, Tell the, us about healing the healing properties, properties of, of Sade. Sade. Uh, I, I Actually, I just picked that up when I worked under tourism. Um, I never did sage before. I, I never smudged before. Um, now my my young fellow does the powwow scene, so we do we we go around powwows and and we do a lot of stuff and 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 uh, like I said, I, I, I before that before that I, I I would walk out of the room if people were smudging because I don't know I I didn't believe in it that time or I didn't know what it was for, but it, it's to be purify purify the, the the whole the whole body and and when when my young fella moved into his bedroom uh he wouldn't sleep in there so i told him I, this is what we did we 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 did the um we did the smudge for his room and and we smudged the whole room corner to corner and we said a prayer and as, as, as we were going along and uh it was just to get rid of all the bad spirits or the or bad things that are in in that area and once we got that done, the first night he stepped with the lights off. And after that, he's been sleeping in his room ever since. So it, it is a powerful thing that you can use. Yeah. Yeah. For the for, the, for cleaning, for the, cleaning, the, cleaning air. the air. Yeah. And purifying your your, your body as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, well, I'm looking forward, forward to, your to your show, Patrick, show, Patrick because, because I have... Because I have There's an echo, There's an on, echo my voice, on my voice, and I've lots to learn. I'm not, not going to talk, talk much longer. longer. But thank but you. Thank you. Not a problem. I, I enjoyed. Our, I enjoyed meeting you, and I enjoyed our talk. Yes. Yes. So. We'll see, we'll this, see Sunday. this Sunday. I'll see you Sunday. Have a, have a good day. You too. So that was Patrick Marshall from Escazoni. Now, apparently, I have an echo. I'm just going to do a sound check with you guys right now. Do I still have an echo on my microphone? I appreciate it. Those who are out there with IT uh, help. So I'm just going to do a sound check here. We've had a few little weird things. Is there an Is there echo, an echo now? now? Just doing, just doing, just doing, a, just sound doing a sound check, Patrick, 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 with the audience. With the audience. Can, you, can you hear me? 
Rebecca? Yeah. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, I took the mic off, so yeah. I'm I'm using the mic on the on the laptop. You find that better? There is there less echo with that, or was it better with the mic? Check, check. Let's try it now. Try it now. Am I echoing? Am I to echoing you, to Patrick? You, Patrick? Not too bad. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank again. you again. I'm gonna I'm close, gonna close the, the door. All right. See ya. Okay, so we'll keep on picking away at this, uh, viewers. Uh, let me know, Marie, if you're still on there. Paul McDonald, if you're still on there, maybe just let me know if you could hear. Not sure why. I did get a new microphone, and I'm not sure why that there's an echo. Um, and, of course, I love figuring this out before I get on live. So... Hmm. Check one, two, three. Check one, two, three. Check, check, check. Hmm. I wonder if I do this audio. All right, let's try this now. Is there an echo? I just switched my sound settings. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'm Paul McDonald, it's clear now. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm bring, gonna bring. Patrick, Patrick, if you're there, I'm bringing more, more sound. sound. But Steve, it's, it's still, still echoing, echoing to, me. to me. I say, I say something, something, and then it and repeats, then it repeats itself. itself. Check. Check one, two, three. Check one, two, three. It is echoing, Bonnie says. Is it, Bonnie, I just, I'm going to try a couple different things. I just shut Patrick's microphone off. It may be something in his microphone setting, which I'd like to figure out before Sunday, before his first show. Um, and I just turned his microphone off. Still an echo. Hmm. Okay, stay there. I'm going to disconnect for a second and be right back on. Okay, check one, two, three. 
check one, two, three, four, check one, two, three. I'm back just doing a sound check, viewers. We were just practicing getting ready for our weekend shows and new microphone, uh, some new settings on my laptop. So I really appreciate doing a sound check. Uh, just let us know if there's an echo now. And it all started happening when I downloaded a new virus uh, protection. Clear. Yes. Okay. So let's eliminate some stuff here. Paul McDonald, if you don't mind staying on with me for just a few seconds longer, now that it's clear, I'm going to go back on to Patrick's microphone and see if there's an echo when I join him. Check, Check one, one two, three, three, four. four. There's, an, There's echo. an echo. Check, Check one, one, two, two three, four. four. There's, an, There's echo. an echo. Patrick, Patrick are, you there? are you there? Hello. Hello. I believe, I believe there's an, there's an echo. echo. Paul, what Paul, does that, what sound, does that like? sound like? Bonnie? Bonnie? Echo. Echo. Okay. Okay. There should be no echo now because uh, his microphone is off. So there must be something in his microphone that is making an echo on mine. Um, anyway, if there's anyone out there that has a little bit more experience with software settings, let me know. I'd like to get this figured out before the weekend. Thanks everyone for watching. And I see a bunch of new comments that I haven't even seen yet. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned. Oh, good, Paul, it's clear. Stay tuned. Up next at 9 o'clock is our Monday Night Jam Show. Now, our Monday Night Jam Show is also top number one on our charts. And that's Sean O'Connell. And he is going to be bringing on, where is the musician we have on tonight? Uh, where is it? We have on tonight. Tonight, tonight. Drum roll. Um. Drum roll, uh, da, 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 da. ripple effects, Monday night jams tonight. We had Andre Petipa on, Natalie McMaster, Heather Rankin, JP Cormier, Dave Gunning. We've had so many great musicians on Stephen Christmas from Escazoni. Uh, we have a third channel Monday night jams. If you ever want to see our musicians and the past shows tonight, we have on Mike Fagan. Mike Fagan is um, going to do tonight with Mike's cover of Queen of Portland by Matt Mays. Uh, he does a great rendition of that. And Mike Fagan is on tonight. He's coming with new release tunes written during his isolation time live at 9 p.m. with Sean O'Connell on Ripple FX Cape Breton. So what do you think about that? That's going to be a good show. What do you viewers want to see more of? So here is our lineup for the week. We have some fantastic shows coming. Um, on Monday nights, we have uh, bi-weekly now since the curve is starting to flatten. We have uh, MP Mike Calloway on. on um, we also have Sean O'Connell's show uh, Monday nights at 9 o'clock. Then on Tuesday, we have a cooking show with Sherry Woodman from Hinton, Alberta, live cooking in her kitchen. Right after that, we have Karen Dean. This was a, a lady in Colchester, a single mom of three. She runs a clothing business, a clothing design. She raised $75,000. She's going for $100,000 for the victims of the Colchester shooting. Karen is on with a motivational speaker, business mentor, uh, tomorrow night at uh, 9 o'clock for uh, any ladies, anyone that wants to join in. 
Then on Wednesday night, we have the Fish On Show with outdoor guide Matt Sazito, and he brings in lots of fishing guides and outdoor hunting guides from all over Canada. And Matt Sazito is going into his sixth episode, and his numbers are rising right up into our top charts on Wednesday night. We have two new shows starting this week. We have Steve Lavelle from Quebec starting his show on Wednesday night at 9 o'clock. Now, Steve is not a new amateur to the media world of broadcasting. He has his own channel there in Quebec. He's going to be on and doing a lot of stuff uh, with in his area there and interviewing people and, and also talking about disability, uh, those that live with disabilities um, and also mental wellness. Then on Thursday night, we have the guitar show, Dylan DeVoe. Dis uh, Destiny DeVoe always gives him a good hand behind the screen with the, uh, the narrating. I love it. Those two work really well together. So Dylan DeVoe is coming on tomorrow night with his, or Thursday night with his show. Seven o'clock is the Wayne O'Toole show, CBRM. So Wayne talks with people in CBRM and off the island. Wayne is into green sustainability, uh, solar panel, uh, recircular re no circular uh regeneration circular economics i think i have that right i know lloyd mcpherson will be on here any minute correcting me on whatever i'm saying uh but wayne will be on this thursday at seven o'clock with the wayne o'toole show uh and ann edwards this is a really neat show coming you guys ann edwards was a media reporter for global news or ctv uh, she's the daughter of the world-renowned uh, pianist uh, from New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, sorry, her dad, John Howard. And Anne um, talks about advocates for bipolar. She has a bipolar and she has a mood personality um, that restricts her to a lot of things. So she would have thought, but Anne's back in the scene again as a stand-up comedian. So she tries to make take more of a lighthearted approach about having bipolar and also uh, other issues and Anne advocates for mental wellness. So she's going to be on Thursday night uh, with her own show as well, interviewing people. We just got a great lineup. And then on Sundays, we have the famous Scotland show that is rising to top number one on our charts, which is amazing. We bring in musicians from uh, Cape Breton, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, UK, you name it. We come on, uh, Peter Wood is my co-host, and uh, Ross McNaughton, Paul and Shauna Anderson, and then other musicians come on as well. Uh, so, and then right after that, we have the new show with Annie Bernard Daisley and her co-host, Heidi Marshall. Uh, and they lead a show that is bringing, um, it's called 231 Calls to Justice. Uh, they are women in leadership and government, and they are bringing awareness and advocating uh, for hashtag MMIW, our missing and murdered Indigenous women. And they are bringing to light, Annie, since I've known her, has been so heavily involved, um, especially I got to know her and followed her after uh, the death of Cassidy in Waikagama, a, a death that uh, rattled the whole island uh, and went global with with that. And um, you saw so many red dresses hanging in windows everywhere across Nova Scotia when that happened. So Annie and Heidi are going to head that up on Sundays at 8.30. And then right after that is the Patrick Marshall show, Talak. I should have asked him to help me correct, make sure I was saying that right. But Talak and of course, Patrick is uh, probably more men on that show talking about sports and health and fitness and just things. Uh, Patrick is a, was an addictions counselor for several years. Um, he's just, a, he's got a real wealth of knowledge. I'm looking forward to listening to what he has to say on a couple different topics. So just a wide variety. It's a clear, big buffet platform. And you know what we love? We love when you get engaged with us and when you say hello, like you do on the side comments here, that really makes for a connective show because we're not about, you know, the perfect polished uh, edge. We're about connecting. We don't find content to shock people. We, we share content to connect people. So how are you guys doing tonight? See, we have a few viewers on here and I want to acknowledge that. We've got Paul McDonald. I forget where you're from, Paul. Bonnie Martel, my good friend, Bonnie from um, El Madame. Bonnie runs the, uh, Great food over at the yellow, big yellow bus, the chubby bus. I love the food over there. Um, we've got uh, quite a number of people on here, but just a little too shy to say hello on the side comments. Terry McNeil, how are you doing? Glad to see you on here tonight. 
right, you guys. Well, I'm going to take off here and uh, look forward to sitting back with my cold drink, watching the next show coming up in eight minutes, which, which is Sean O'Connell, Monday Night Jams with uh, Mike Fagan. See you soon, you guys. Thanks for watching.